Hi, this is me, Jamark, and welcome to the world of literature. And for today's lesson, I'm going to be sharing with you a literary work that will transform a piece of yourself. But before that, I would like to ask you a question. How do you show your love to your grandparents? Do you hug them? Do you kiss them? Or any form of love language? Because I didn't really grow up with my grandparents. I didn't spend much time with them. So I was never really able to showcase a way of showing my love and care for my grandparents. But to other elders, of course, I do pagmamano, and I guess you also do the same. Anyway, let's go back to the, to the main purpose of this video. Well, I just ask you those questions to remind you of what elders deserve from us, their condition, and what we do as a younger generation in order to make them feel loved cared for and respected. Apart from that, uh, these are all related to the story that I'm going to talk about today. This is a story that will change the way you see and treat elders and lead you to loving them even more and respecting their vulnerability. So if you're ready, let's get started. So let's begin with introducing the title, The Wise Old Woman by Yoshiko Ochida. And later on, you will get to know the author of this literary work as we carry on with our discussion. So just stay right there and relax. Okay, let's continue by reading the content. We have background of the story, author's background, characterization, plot, styles of the author, theme, cultural implications, and the last but not the least, the implication of the title. Okay, let's proceed to the next slide. We have background of the story. The Wise Old Woman is a dramatic Japanese folk tale that tells the story of a cruel overlord and a young farmer's elderly mother. The overlord threatens to destroy the farmer's village unless the young lord can perform three seemingly impossible tasks. So in this part of the analysis, there are four things being introduced to us. What are those? The first one is that it tells us about what kind of literary work the wise old woman is, which is a Japanese folktale as mentioned above. The second one is that it tells us what the story is all about. The third one is it introduces to us the, prim the primary characters of the story and the last one is that it reveals the conflict of the story. Okay, next slide. The author's background. Yoshiko Ochida was born in Alameda, California on November 24, 1921. She graduated from high school at 16 and enrolled at University of California, Berkeley. Ochida became widely known for her 1982 autobiography Desert Exile, one of several important autobiographical works by Japanese Americans who were in turn the portray internment as a pivotal moment in the formation of the author's personal and cultural identities. Okay, she wrote this Desert Exile as her autobiographical account of her life before and during World War II. Okay, the next. She was an award-winning writer of children's books, all of which are based on aspects of Japanese and Japanese-American history and culture. A series of books, starting with Journey to Topaz in 1971, Indivisible Thread in 1991, and a novel centering on a Japanese-American family, which is, which is Picture Bride in 1987. So, as you can see, as you can observe, most of her literary works as an award-winning writer focus only on the children's literature. Okay, let's proceed to the characterization. So, here are the characters of the story, the wise old woman. We have the aged mother, the young farmer, and Lord Higa. The aged mother, the wise old woman who saved the village with her wisdom. The young farmer, 
the one who hid the old woman in order for him to be saved from death? Lord Higa, the cruel lord who ordered that all people over the age of 71 must be banished to the mountains to die. Okay, later on you will get to be knowledgeable with these characters, starting from how this old woman saved the village, why this young farmer hid his mother, and what's the reason why this cruel king changed his order or decrees. Okay, we are now in the most awaited part of the story, the plot. Okay, let me read this. The lord of a small village in Japan decrees that all people over the age of 71 must be banished to the mountains to die. The villagers are all upset but must obey or be fearfully punished. A young farmer tries to take his mother but loves her too much and so he, so he hides her in his floor instead. So, the lord of the village ordered the villagers to take their elders and live in the mountains until they die. However, this young farmer felt sad and guilty to leave his mother in the mountain. So, he was trying to find ways to hide his mother. Next, Lord Higa wants to conquer the village and sends over the impossible task of making 1,000 ropes out of ashes. No one can solve the riddle until the farmer asks his mother, who tells him to soak a rope in salt water and then burn it. The farmer tells the Lord and saves the village. So, as you have observed, the Lord sent three impossible tasks. What are those tasks? Okay, the first task is to make 1,000 ropes out of ashes. So, the old woman sold the first task by wetting the rope in salt water and letting it dry, and when it was burned, it would hold its shape. So, the first task, the woman already showcased her brilliance by solving the problem of their village. Okay, let's proceed to the next slide. Lord Higa sends over two more tasks, one after another. The second task is to wind a piece of silk through a log with holes and curves. The mother solves this by telling the farmer to tie a piece of silk to an ant and put some sugar at the end. The ant will lead the piece of silk through. The third task is to find a drum that sounds without being beaten. The mother tells the farmer to make a drum out of paper and trap a bee with them. When the bee tries to escape, it beats against the paper. So, it's really obvious that uh, these three tasks are really hard to. These three tasks are really difficult. And the second task is to thread a piece of silk through a curved hole. And the old woman solved this again by by tying an ant to the silk thread and putting sugar on the end of the log. And the next, and the last task, is to make a drum without being beaten. And the old woman solved this by making a drum with sides of paper and putting a bee inside so the bee would buzz around and hit the paper as it tries to escape. So in this story, it is really commendable that the wise old woman was able to was able to solve the task given by the Lord. Okay. The village is saved, and the Lord asks the farmer how he knew the answers. The farmer confesses he is hiding his mother, and the Lord realizes his mistake. He decrees that all people will not be banished and instead will be valued. Will be valued. Lord Higa decides such wise people should be allowed to live in peace, and they do. So because of the brilliant idea of the old woman, the whole village was saved, and it made the Lord change his order to value the elders and let them live in peace. Okay, let's proceed to the styles of the author. Obviously, the conflict is man versus man. Foreshadowing, the wise old woman foreshadows in meets and fairy tales for the wisdom of the eternal female nature. Next slide is the theme. 
The theme is to respect your elders because they are wise and have many more experiences than someone half their age. So, it is really our bare minimum to respect our elders because they are way more experienced than us. Not only do they res not only do they deserve respect because of that, but also we would not be here if not for them, obviously. And however, this is however some people wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Nowadays, there are many teenagers who think being rude is fashionable. They even consider it as a trend. They think rude and aggressive behavior is okay. They even talk back when corrected. Well, that's the sad reality. But I hope this story will inspire them to the way they see elders. Okay, next is the cultural implication. The practice of their culture called ubasute. Centuries ago, Japan created a word called ubasute. Translated as granny dumping, it described the practice of poor citizens bringing their senile elders to mountaintops because they can no longer afford their care. Actually, this kind of practice used to exist way back centuries ago in Japan. They would really abandon their elders. They were carried to the mountains or some other remote and desolate places and left there to die. How sad. But now, it's no longer being practiced in Japan. In fact, elders in, in Japan are treated with utmost respect. Many Japanese families have several genera generations living under one roof, just like here in the Philippines. And according to this study, it is one of the main reasons, one of the main reasons that in Japan, elderly people live longer than any other population and these are more and there are more elderly citizens in japan than young people and their government are also giving a lot of benefits and extensive care services and professional support these are just few of the main reasons why japan is an elderly friendly country and also here in the philippines we are lucky and it's good that it's not mandatory to send our elders to home for the aged unlike in other countries, especially in Western countries. They, when the, their, their parents reach the age of 60, they are obliged or they are mandated to live in the, the home for the aged, away from their family. And lastly, we have the implication of the title. The title, The Wise Old Woman, simply implies that this old woman is full of wisdom due to her brilliant idea of how to solve the problems in the village. So basically, the title itself has something to do with the wisdom of the old woman. And this speaks a lot about how brilliant elders are because of their experiences in life. As, and that's why we should be grateful to them. They deserve to be loved. They deserve to be respected. They deserve all the comfort from us. And I think it's about time to reciprocate the love that they have made us feel. So, as I have said, it's really our bare minimum to respect and love our elders because they are way more experienced than us. And that's enough. That's enough reason for us to respect, care, and love our elders. So that's the story of the wise old woman. So I hope you have learned a lesson from the story today and apply it to your daily living. That's the end of our discussion. Once again, this is Jamark Ortega. And if you want a lot more of my video, just press the subscribe button and don't forget to click the notification bell so you'll be notified on my next video. Thank you and God bless us. But wait, I would like to remind you after seeing this video to never hesitate to show whatever language you have with your grandparents. You can go kiss them, you can go hug them, or you can say I love you. Make use of every single moment that you have with them. Because if not, 
you might regret it later. Once again, thank you so much for watching this video.